Hello everyone, welcome to Eternal Brews. My name is Pojo, and pretty excited to talk about an expedition deck today. It's the month of August, which means that our current expedition is Dark Frontier Defiance uh, and Trials of Grodoth, in addition to the core set. Uh, we are going to be looking at a Quinn deck, which uh, one of our favorite cards, this is the excellent like non-binary explorer, good fun things all happening with it. 7-7 seven, seven with summon draw a card, and when one of your units becomes renowned, draw Quinn from your void. I like this card a lot. I like the art on it. I like the overall style of the card. It's really, really fun. Uh, it often seems like it belongs in some other types of decks where you have like a little more access to killer, but now that you have access to killer in blue with uh, not only savagery, but blood hunt, there's a lot more potential for this card to really sort of take off in certain types of metas. Uh, it's never quite been there in comparison to some of like the fire time primal stuff but i've really liked it in a lot of the limited formats including the heroes resolve mode and uh yeah just in general like playing sort of casual stuff with quinn so let's talk about what we're doing with this deck this is a pledge deck the basic idea is to play a curve of excellent mid-range units and uh then like we are going to use renown to make all of those units have extra value and extra card draw associated with them everything we're doing is on board position like we aren't actually trying to develop anything that will not in some way influence the board, but we do get some incidental benefits from cards like Softfoot Burglar, Hojin Crownbreaker, and uh, Chunk Chunk and other things to get us like extra cards. In addition, Quinn at the very, very top draws us additional cards, so when we do run low, we hit our big six drop, we play our big six drop, and then our big six drop is not only a card engine of their own, but also a way to bring back this card and get even more cards as a result. Ends up being like sort of a bigger hard of the vault in many situations doesn't have quite as proactive a board stance but if you give it cards like savagery or blood hunt then it gets pretty out of control so uh, basic plan here is we are going to trigger renown as often as possible we're going to do that mostly with killer effects savagery and blood hunt but we also have display of honor and finally minotaur plate maker and Egen imperial armor in the uh, main board Egen is probably the most cuttable of these cards so don't feel like you have to craft this legendary because it's not strictly necessary for the list uh, anaya likewise can be replaced with chunk chunk and some of like the other four drops this card is kind of fine but mostly the only thing this deck needs as far as legendaries is quinn you can build a cheaper version with uh, other renowned cards and just play around with that kind of stuff so don't worry too much about Ejin or Anaya if you don't need to run them because neither of them make or break this deck in terms of its overall power level so early on we play Softfoot Burglar a card that synergizes pretty well with Savagery and Blood Hunt and occasionally allows us to pick up some pretty interesting tricks and just general value while getting those treasure troves to both buff the Softfoot Burglars and also get us into more power and to better stuff. Hojin Crown Breaker is of course the like definite two drop that we want to be playing. It empowers very easily. It plays really well with Savagery and Blood Hunt. Killering a Hojin is a great way to get value out of a card that traditionally does not have a lot of, like traditionally Hojin's one weakness is that it is a card that often isn't interacted with very much. You play it, you get the lifesteal with it, and then your opponent kills it with something incidental later on. They almost never trade with Hojin unless it's going to be very, very favorably. But Savagery forces people to trade with Hojin favorably, which is really, really strong stuff in addition to playing the extra justice sigil to set up cards like plate maker anaya and quinn so all of that's really really good uh, Egen Imperial Armor plays weapons, which we'll talk about that more when we get to Plate Maker. Red Canyon Smuggler gets uh, market cards out of our deck. You can play Rakano Banner, Pristine Light, Deep Forge Plate, and Howling Peak, as well as Ikaria the Liberator. Most of the time you're going to be fetching Rakano Banner because fixing for this deck is pretty important, but uh, when you actually have all of your influence together, you can pick up answers to tougher boards. You can pick up Deep Forge Plate to make many of your cards into just absolute nonsense. Hojin with the Deep Forge Plate is pretty okay. Red Canyon with the Deep Forge Plate is wild. Plate Maker with the Deep Forge Plate is really good. Anaya with the Deep Forge Plate is really good. Basically, almost everything plays really well with this card, and it tends to be very, very strong in that situation. If you're looking for more card advantage, Howling Peak can provide you with mirror images on your better cards, so you can duplicate cards with Aegis and Stun, cards with Killer if you are giving Quinn Killer. You can duplicate a wild variety of things while also gunning down things that are problems for you. So Howling Peak is definitely excellent in this deck and does a lot of good things. And finally, there's always the good old fallback of Ikaria, although this card can again be replaced with other things if you are so inclined. 
Chunk Chunk is early pledge that allows us to fix for different colors pretty easily. The main thing you want to do in this deck is accumulate two red, two green, and two blue. If you can focus on that and make sure that you actually have that influence, every other card in your deck will just play really, really smoothly, and you'll have no problem with the general sort of value of that setup. For that reason, we're playing seats, we're playing tokens, and we're playing Ixtune Cargo so that we can pick up all of those colors. Once we have all those colors, Cargo turns into Contraband and gives us a little bit of extra value, and uh, cards like Anaya, Arctic Sheriff, Chunk Chunk and Quinn are all available to play. Chunk Chunk locks down enemy boards, creates extra health for your twist units like Plate Maker, as well as extra health for your one health units like Softfoot Burglar, Crown Breaker, and Smuggler. It's really, really handy, and the stun effect is generally quite good at that particular cost. Plate Maker is the star of the deck. Not only does it have double damage, but it also triggers every single renown on every single unit, so you can get free cards off of Burglar, get extra Justice Sigils off of Crown Breaker, get your Snow Forts, get your Aegises on Anaya, and just generally trigger Quinn as often as you would like, which is super, super valuable. Also, the card is a beater in its own right, and it plays pretty well with itself because you can put weapons on top of the plate maker to make very, very nasty units. Anaya has Aegis and locks down units for good in a permafrost style sense, which is really, really handy if you are playing it with Savagery, because you can easily play this card with Savagery to lock down two different units, killing one and stunning the other while giving yourself a 6-6 with Aegis on the board really, really strong. And finally, at the top is Quinn. Quinn is a 7-7, seven, seven, which means that they are just really, really solid with Savagery and Bloodhunt, just does nutty things. And then, like, basically all of the extra value that they get out of the draw card, as well as out of the ability to just play this card at 6, means that you can do some pretty wild things with it. Like, basically it's just a ton of card advantage. It usually doesn't like win the game on its own, but what it will do is it will basically play and then you get like a pile of cards that you will then win the game with as a result. Like it's really, really hard to shut down Quinn in a way that is card efficient. And even if you do manage to spend a feeding time or some other silence effect on it, you still got the card off of Quinn for playing it, which means that you're well ahead on other cards that influence the board, which every single other card on your list does influence the board. So really, really good stuff, and generally gets you quite a bit of a ways. Display of Honor can notably be used to draw weapons from your void. People forget that text a little bit, but it's actually pretty handy with Plate Maker and Aegin, so keep that in mind. But you can also use this, of course, to trigger Renowns, and in a Pickle, you can transform an enemy unit into a Goat, which is pretty handy, but I would say it's probably the least used mode on Display of Honor unless you are... Uh, well, uh, maybe under drawing weapons, but nonetheless, uh, all three of these modes are really handy, and the lifesteal allows you to stabilize against more aggro decks, so you get to do some pretty wild stuff here. So let's play a couple rounds, and we'll show you how the deck works. See you in just a moment. All right, here we are up against Awata. Our opener has three pledges, which is a pretty good way to fix up our power and get to things that we want. But notably, we can't really play anything with these pledges. I would say here, I mean, there's some advantage in trying to go for Chunk Chunk, but overall, I don't think this power base looks very strong. So let's go ahead and see if we can redraw here. Chunk Chunk looks great. And yeah, that should really get us started. So I can get Justice off of Token of Honor, which means that I should go for Primal or Fire off of Chunk Chunk first. And since Primal is obviously the uh, card of choice here because of our current killer setup, we're definitely going to look for that. Anything Headhunter is an interesting card. We can kill it pretty fast. So let's just go ahead and go for a token of honor for some justice. I think we're going to slow play Hojin so we don't have to deal with Headhunter twisting for wanted posters because that feels like it would be a little rough. Silver Short Sword is interesting, not a major follow up. Uh, don't think we're particularly worried about it at the moment. And there's Plate Maker, which is definitely not bad. So we're going to wait here, we're going to play Hojin into Blood Hunt and just kill this Headhunter while getting the justice we need for Plate Maker. That should set us up pretty well. Alright, and there's our display of honor as well, which is pretty nice. Never stop. Never Blood Hunt here gets us justice, and it can also help us find our fire for Quinn. Pretty sure there's nothing happening here that we have to worry about. The main problem, of course, will be Defiance, but honestly, we might actually stay put. Now, now, yeah, we should go for it. Looks like they have a fast spell, and it could be Defiance, but it could also be Finest Hour, so either way, we want to see it before the Headhunter twists. No escape. 
All right, pick that one up for free, and then Silver Short Sword will pick up Hojin. So our follow-up is going to be Minotaur Plate Maker. We can get a Savagery if we find blue, and if we find red, we can get something else, which either way I'm pretty happy. This is not amazing, but we can maybe make something happen. Since this deck is mono green, the main thing to worry about here is Valkyrie Enforcer, and we have a good answer to that in Torch. I don't think I'm particularly worried about anything else against Plate Maker. We just exchange really well with the card. Uh, that could be a Finest Hour, and in fact almost certainly is, so let's just ignore it. And I did have Valkyrie Enforcer. Good to know, but we still got a 2-5 to defend with now, so I'm not too worried. And there's the finest hour. So, Blood Hunt here gets us the 2-2 for free while also digging up some better cards for us. Another Plate Maker wouldn't be bad, but I'm also looking for a little bit of fire here, so let's just kill that. And I don't think we want to morph a Valkyrie into a other card here. Oh, well now we do. It's a 7-7. It's a goat. Trust in your allies. That looked like a bad idea. Alright, so we've got Silver Short Sword available and Quinn just came out. Which is gonna get us some card drop. That'll pick up a little bit of extra for us, and we can kill the short sword. And now we're in very good shape. Our opponent's got a little bit of armor to play with, but overall we're looking pretty comfy. Order of the Spire, that card needs to go away. We'd really like to draw some blue here if we can. Another Quinn doesn't hurt, that might actually help us draw the blue that we need. I'll forge my own path. Eh, it's another plate maker, which certainly doesn't hurt either. Let's go ahead and attack for seven here. And just start pushing. In my now the thing about Quinns is that they offer a really, really good clock. So as long as we can continue playing them, they are going to do wild amounts of damage and really force our opponent to respond to us in weird ways. Uh, does have the power for the 8-8 there, which is pretty rough. Um, but I guess we'll be okay. We'll just take the 8. And if I want to keep pushing, I can. I can also play Plate Maker into, like, Softfoot Burglar. This seems pretty reasonable. That gets us a card draw and a unit to attack with, and another Quinn, which, of course, getting Quinns back is a big deal here. If they draw power, they get a big unit, but we're pushing so hard that we don't care. Um, I could honestly take 8 here if I wanted to, but I think we're just going to try to... Yeah, okay. 16, no surprises, we're just going to block with Software Burglar. That's what Software Burglar is here for. Yeah, Agent Imperial Armor, that's pretty cool. Let's play our Quinn. I'll forge my own path. That gets us a Blood Hunt, which we could feasibly use here. I think with Ejin, we can play a 4-4 Mithril Armor on the Plate Maker, and then we can Blood Hunt and make the Plate Maker kill even like a 16-16. Could be very worth it. Seed of Glory here, okay. So, eh, it's going to take a while to get Ejin up to speed, but I think we can do it. The alternative is to just go for it, and I think going for it actually was lethal there, so... Seemed pretty worth it. Not a bad game. Alright, next up is Garion Bell. We got a Naya Arctic Sheriff here, and a Sawfoot Burglar, and a Hojin, so... I'm super comfy with this. I think we're probably gonna play a Naya as a Primal just to get ourselves a little bit further up on the, uh, Savagery. But then we'll play our Seat of Glory and just get the fire down for Sawfoot Burglar. So, Primal first. Yay. And then, yeah, go for the uh, Sawfoot Burglar into the Savagery. A little bit of fire there doesn't hurt. Um, Hojin also plays here if we want to, but since I don't have anything to play on Hojin, eh, I think I'd be comfortable with it, and it certainly wouldn't be bad, but we can probably stay away from it for the moment. Found another Primal, which is great. Red Canyon Smuggler here is going to be also awesome. Uh, I've got my red, I've got my green, and I'm going to get another green from Hojin for sure. So we can pick up whatever we want here. I can do Rakano Banner, which wouldn't really fix for anything. I don't need it. Deep Forge Plate is a reasonable pickup that can be played on my current power. I have three more power represented with Hojin, Fire, and Primal, so I can get a six drop here with Howling Peak. And basically that's what is going to be the determination as far as our merchants goes, is what we can afford at what time. And right now we have a pretty simple plan, so we're going to go for that. Cool. A little fire here doesn't hurt. Uh, 
Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> I guess we'll end our turn. Um, blocking the Gorgon Fanatic is not bad, but yeah, I should have played the Primal there. That was my bad. Yeah, I got a Ghost Format. So that's some card draw. But it does mean you spend some cards to draw, so not the end of the world. Okay, so we're up against the Scream deck. That means that having uh, general value is always going to be pretty important here. I'm going to attack here. I'm just going to play Chunk Chunk. We're going to keep pressure on, and we're going to basically just do what we can to do as much damage as possible while eventually setting ourselves up for a little life gain. Any life gain that we get is really going to help against the Fanatics since we are playing a much bigger board than our opponent is. Okay, so Hojin here is good. We get Savagery Hojin. To Seed of Fury. That's all the power we need. And 6 5 with Savagery opens up the rest of the board. Gets us into a great spot as far as damage is concerned. I am still pretty open to Hailstorm, but Hailstorm isn't around an expedition. We could get Lightning Struck. That would be the main thing that would be kind of rough. Okay. Death Strike on 2 1. That's a little bit tricky, but not the end of the world. And Dark Return getting back an Ice Sprite. Also not the end of the world. I think we're pretty good with that. So Plate Maker does tons of things here. I think the thing we're going to go for is probably just a Soffit Burglar Puff, which gets us a card to draw. Treasure Trove. Now we're pushing 8 damage. And Quinn Lone Wanderer is available, so next time we get a Savagery or a Blood Hunt, we have something really good to put into it. <laughs> Ice Sprite, obviously not going to hold down the fort. We're going to throw Howling Peak what and just gun that card say? down. And yeah, overall this looks pretty strong. I would say that, yeah, let's just go ahead and do the gun down now. That gets us 2-3. And then we can buff up here and get a little extra health on everything. Which also allows us to trigger the Plate Maker more, but... That's okay, because we've definitely won here. Alright, last round, up against Batara. Uh, we have Anaya and Chunk Chunk available, so I can pledge Justice, and that would get me decently far, especially with this double Primal that we've got available. But the main problem is that I don't have anything to play after that. I think I'm kind of comfy with this. It's a little bit on the weak side, but honestly, it's most of the cards that I need. I think I'm going to throw it back. Like, I would like to see some 1 and 2 drops that I can play. Okay, that seems better. So we got a Hojin, we got a Red Canyon Smuggler, and yeah, overall this is pretty close. Uh, that first hand was almost a keeper. Certainly would be something that I might keep if it was the second hand and I didn't want to go to 6, but since I had at least a good mulligan to look at, I figured we would go ahead and go for it. All right, Primal here can set up Hojin, which certainly could be worth it. Uh, I can also play Red Canyon. There's there's options here. If I want to play Hojin on Primal, I can do that and then set up Red Canyon. Uh, or I could develop Token of Honor and then set up Red Canyon next turn, which I don't think that's really going to work. We're going to have to develop Red no matter what, so definitely the thing to go for here is just Hojin on two. If you want to build this deck uh, non- in a format other than um, Expeditions, then the main things that you need to do are just get the Skycrag Banners and the Crests in here. The deck is much stronger with Crests and Skycrag Banners, and those are really the only cards that it feels like it's missing if you're playing it in Ranked. Uh, I've had pretty good success with this deck in Ranked, so it's a reasonable option if you want to go for it. But uh, yeah, overall we're pretty happy with what we're running right here. Mind over All right, mind. Awakened Student is fine. Um, I've already got Display of Honor and everything set up, so... The main thing to get here would be more power if we wanted it. Uh, I can't really play the Savagery, so we're not going to dance around the Savagery and try and figure out what we're doing with that. Let's instead pick up Pristine Light or Rakano Banner and use those to set up our board. I think I'm most comfy with Rakano Banner since that allows me to use Token of Honor as a Primal. Yeah, let's just grab the power. And it's the Power Hour. You'll see a lot of Empower decks and Expeditions. I've seen a ton of Combray stuff particularly with uh, Awakened Student, Sanctuary Priest, Mystic Ascendant. There's just all the Empower stuff is very much available in this format because uh, Empower went away for 
several uh, sets and then came back for Defiance, which uh, means that you have some pretty interesting Corendon options if you are so inclined. Uh, but yeah, we've got plenty of Empower stuff available here, and looks like the attack in is happening. I'm not sure if I'm comfy with this block. I think I'd rather stay put. It's got to be a Finest Hour, so... Yeah, we're good. We'll let it happen. Okay, Blood Hunt would get us an answer for sure, but I think the easier thing to do here is just go ahead and... Eh, we could play Hojin right now. Hojin into Blood Hunt... Oh, no, I did it wrong. If I'd played the power before the Hojin was down, then I would have been okay. But yeah, the, the main thing I was going to do here was block and display of honor, so we'll do that instead. Uh, the correct play, I think, would have been to play Hojin Crownbreaker and then Blood Hunt Hojin to sort of set up our board. But as it stands, we're actually in pretty good shape here, and our opponent will probably be going for some sort of finest hour play, so might as well stay put. All right, we got a Gilded Glaive. This is a lot. That's a 6-6. Six, six with Predator's Instinct. But of course, Display of Honor on a double damage unit is a great way to recover tempo. And it turns out I'm the killer deck, not uh, my opponent. So I think we're pretty happy with that result. Let's play the Primal here. I'm just going to hold the Hojin and the Blood Hunt since that gets us up to 6. And also since Anaya Arctic Sheriff is coming down to stun something next turn, which is a pretty big deal. Fused Guardian has Endurance, so yeah, nothing else we can do about that. We're just going to do Contraband. Grab a random card. If it's a good removal card, we'll use it. Otherwise, we'll go for something else. Silverwing Avenger and Fireman Lioness are both fine here. Uh, of the two, I'm not sure which I like the most. Probably Fireman Lioness, since it creates a bunch of cheap blockers that we can play with. So we'll go with that. But Hojin Crownbreaker is the main thing. And Blood Hunt on Hojin gets us a 4 1 or a 4 3, which we can then use to kill that Infused Guardian before it does any empowering. Another Anaya Arctic Sheriff. I don't need stun right now. Our opponent has some endurance going on. So let's see if we can find a Quinn. If they come out, then we're in very good shape because that'll refresh our hand and put us into the Mind over body. red. Or put us into the black, rather. Uh, yeah, we got a Blood Hunt here and a Fireman Lioness. I think Anaya looks fine here. Go ahead and make that stun happen. There wasn't a stand together, which is fairly common in this deck. Uh, I'm glad to see that, and also that means that we'll be able to blood hunt and kill something else while giving an Aegis to this unit, which should provoke the uh, Concede, depending on what our opponent is doing. If they have solid removal for the 4-4, they'll just use that, and that'll be that. But if they have another unit, then we will win. Ooh, pillar <laughs> of Amar. My, my, my. Yeah, this will convert. This should convert to a Concede. So, boop. Boop. Surrender. I'm sorry. Must be done. Um, and yeah, let's play a Primal here. We can trade Fireman Lioness if we need to for market stuff, so it's better to just play the power as it goes. Vanquish here triggers the 6-6, six, six, not a big deal. And Chunk Chunk can stun stuff, but isn't super important. So, for once we get to play some kitties. They're adorable, and they're lovely, and we're attacking with them for damage. Surrender. Alright, who's a good kitty? Yes, you are. Uh, so Resolute Monk is played straight. next, and that's going to be not a big deal. We'll just chunk chunk here and stun that as well. We can lock down boards pretty easily to get in lots of damage, and a lot of times this deck will win not off of card advantage, but off of the ability to just mess up your opponent's stuff well enough while playing stuff on the board, which we do quite a lot of. So go ahead and go throw that. Uh, District Infantry is the last card. This 3-1 unspools next turn, but it's just not enough, so our opponent's going to give it to us, and that'll be the game. Pretty good round overall. Alright, that'll do it. If you're looking for some other ideas as to what to do with this deck, uh, you can use Bear Guard Bayonet if you are so inclined in Ranked to set up cards like Ai Lin, the Rising Storm. This card actually plays pretty well with Enemy of My Enemy and a Howling Peak deck. So if you want to do Enemy of My Enemy, this is the one way that you can actually play this uh, setup. We've done it. It's pretty good. It's full of card advantage, but it's mostly a little bit too slow, so we usually don't run it. Uh, I like I like I Lin a lot in this setup, and I Lin the Rising Storm is one of my favorite cards, so this is a pretty strong place to put her, but in this case, we just figured we would let Quinn do the talking, since that is a great way to set it up. But if you find yourself lacking reach this is a good legendary to look to and if you want to 
go a little bit cheaper and try to get a little bit more aggressive, then the cards to look for are cards like Imperial Loyalist, the 4-3 with Pledge, and a little bit more in the 2-drop slot, such as Rebel Sharpshooter. Uh, Rebel Sharpshooter is actually really, really strong in this list. Or No, it's not called Rebel Sharpshooter. It's called Highland Sharpshooter. Uh, and this is a card that makes the cut in this list quite frequently, especially with the killer effect, since you can give killer to Highland Sharpshooter and then get the next card in your deck to have killer as well. It's a great way to trigger Quinn. We actually run this card in the deck quite a bit. And if you want to do a more aggressive version of the Quinn deck, this is actually a really good way to sort of capitalize on those uh, hunts. So fun stuff there. And yeah, pretty strong in general. That's it for today's Eternal Brew. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we will be back with more Eternal Brews very shortly, I hope. I'm hoping to record a bunch of them this week. Uh, and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, Patreon, and all of the different places as Loco Pojo. So see you next time. Have a good one.